Hello, everyone, and thank you very much, Alexei, for the introduction. I'm Suyuan Dai from Auburn University at the United States, and uh, I want to talk about uh, uh, non-paritons in configured fan wireless materials. So uh, it is always a very, uh, it is always happy to present something in the SBAC workshop because uh, most of the audience could follow the talk. And uh, it is even happier to have uh, Pablo and uh, Antonio as the previous speaker because they have done excellent uh, introduction of the, of the field. So I just want to uh, add additional notes that uh, are for Pluritons in our Vendor materials are not only they have such advances, uh, advantages, because, uh, but also they could be are configured. That means uh, uh, you could combine these different uh, uh, our materials in hero structures, either by stacking, twisting, or microstructuring, are uh, to have uh, our configured paritons, which uh, that will have uh, additional properties that do not exist in nature. So I'm going to introduce several uh, examples in this, uh, under this uh, uh, topic. Uh, our first example is that uh, we know that uh, graphene supports our surface plasma pluritones uh, and uh, our boron nitride support phonon pluritones, which are, tends to have a longer lifetime. However, phonon pluritones, the nature is uh, latest vibrations, and usually it is very rigid. So it's very hard to tune phonon pluritones. Uh, but if you combine this uh, graphene and boron nitride together, uh, you actually get these combined vortunes, uh, which showing this device uh, is that uh, our, a single layer of graphene actually uh, elongates the wavelengths of uh, our phonon pluritones in boron nitride here by like uh, 50%. So if you summarize the results shown here that uh, uh, combine graphene and boron nitride, you could also uh, get the tuna uh, get tunability, dynamic tunability to phonon pluritons, and also uh, elongate this uh, propagation lens in this uh, hybrid nature. Uh, so the other example is that we could combine uh, phase change materials with uh, our phonon pluritonic 2D materials. Uh, for example, using VU2 that has been pioneered with, uh, by Fritz Kalman and other peers in the field. Uh, basically, if you increase the temperature, you actually uh, get this uh, uh, insulating to metal transitions. So now, if you could uh, again put uh, our 2D paritonic materials on top, you actually could uh, utilize this phase change to control paritonics using VU2. Uh, and also uh, using other phase change materials like GST. Uh, in terms of the stacking, we could also uh, configure 2D materials in, by controlling the substrate and superstrate, uh, because you could easily stack them into different structures. Uh, this is the uh, suspended uh, samples that basically are part of this MO3 has been uh, suspended, as you could see here. Uh, where you see these uh, references get elongated by a factor of uh, almost twice this uh, our original reference. And that is for this uh, our positive dispersion. Uh, in terms of this dispersion, if you go to the higher frequencies where the uh, permittivity switch signs that are in plane directions, you actually get the negative uh, dispersion. And actually, that did shrink the wavelengths because of this uh, sign change of the phase velocity. And also, it also uh, reduces the losses because now you remove the substrates, reduce the substrate uh, losses. So in addition to our stacking, twisting is another tuning, uh, tuning parameter in 2D materials. And uh, there are a lot of uh, discoveries in terms of twisting physics and moray, our superconductivity, ferromagnetism, and many other important physics. So a natural question is uh, whether we could achieve that in pluritonics. And if you choose boron nitride or other isotropic our materials, it's actually very difficult because uh, our once the pluritons is launched, it actually propagates, expands towards all of the directions. So no matter how you twist them, actually, they are pretty much the same unless you form the super lattice. Uh, however, this uh, MO3, since it's highly anisotropic, even if it's an implant, it provides this opportunity because uh, it's an X shape. 
So now if you twist them, actually our, that could uh, make a difference. So then we did the experiment, first start from this, uh, our inspiration from theory that uh, calculate stacked our MO3, our, our bilayers together, and at each of these twisting angles, this is not more ray because we didn't form super lattice, just electromagnetic interaction, at from this uh, zero degree to 90 degree, all of this at each of the specific angle, the wave front is unique. As you could see here from this uh, uh, case space simulation and also the real space simulation uh, with Comso uh, physics. And we did experiment, it uh, matches quite well with the, our simulation showing that uh, wave front could be configured by controlling the twisting angle between two slabs of uh, MO3 from zero degree to 90 degree. Uh, so the other our, our strategy that one could configure polaritons in our venerous material is actually through microstructuring. Uh, so what we did is actually to study the reflection phase of polaritons are because of the our most popular way that people image polaritons through this reflection. A reflection plays an important role uh, in terms of imaging our polaritons by uh, by near spec. And uh, our, but there's one common our feature that uh, if you take a look at the first maximum, first brightest fringes, it not always at this. Uh, it is always off off the edge. That means there's actually a universal reflection phase our, of the polaritons for all of the materials from boron nitride, graphene, nanotubes, and even matter materials. So this uh, first fringe is always off the edge. So that means the, uh, if you think about this complex reflection, means that there's a phase about pi over four. Uh, whether it is fixed or not, we want to explore it. And we actually studied this hyperbolic surface polaritons by microstructuring uh, the geometry. By controlling the angle of this resonator, you actually could control the reflection and reflection phase for this hyperbolic surface polaritons because this mode actually confined our on the side walls. So as you could see here that by controlling the, increasing the angle, the first uh, maximum moved towards the edge. If you increase the angle and when it passes through 180 degree, you see that uh, at the edge it uh, changes from the dark to bright. So it has a sudden jump when the angle passes through 180 degree. And if you summarize it in terms of line profiles, it's more clear that uh, uh, take a look at this track, this first maximum, as you increase alpha, it moves towards the edge and then has this uh, our sudden jump. It also matches quite well with the simulation uh, produced here. Um, so these are, uh, Nano-optical phenomenon can actually be attributed to this uh, our fundamental mass principle that basically governs all of the complex physical parameters. Uh, we summarize the reflection amplitude and phase here. As you could see that uh, our, as alpha increases past through 180 degree, the amplitude are decreased to zero and then increase again. And then this phase has this uh, our sudden jump of pi. Uh, why is that? Because uh, if you plot it in terms of uh, this uh, our complex plan, that uh, uh, the, the, this angle is the reflection phase and the uh, distance to the origin is the reflection amplitude. When the amplitude passes through this origin, there is a sudden pi jump uh, uh, as, you involve from, as, as you pass through this origin if the transition is smooth. So it's basically our mass principle of the complex uh, parameters that uh, are, was uh, are revealed in terms of these uh, polaritons in boron nitride. All right, so let me wrap up that uh, are by uh, stacking, twisting and microstructuring, our when worse materials, one could configure our new properties in terms of uh, for our phonon polaritons in 2D materials. And uh, uh, let me acknowledge uh, uh, the key our contributors, especially from my group and also other collaborators and uh, our funding support from uh, Alabama State and the National Science Foundation. And uh, thank you for attention.